Well, hi, I am Dilly Briggs, and I'm with Center Stage Magazine, and I'm speaking this morning with comedic actress and stand-up comic Erica Rose. How are you doing today, Erica? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Um, <laughs> spoke a minute ago. We both have a little bit of a raspy voice, probably from the weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so sexy. It's <laughs> <laughs> so like, hard to understand both of them at once. We're going to be laughing yeah. and raspy at the same time. <laughs> Don't well, smoke just, kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to start off by saying that um, I have been seeing and listening to a lot of your stuff lately. And I love that you seem to have a very relaxed demeanor about you when you're um, on stage performing your stand-up acts and that you were responsive with the audience to you as well. and um, But, of course, that's probably like second nature to you, right, because you have been, I know you've been on um, A Prairie Home Companion, which is a live radio variety show ever since you were, like, a little girl at 10 years old. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I started when I was 10, and, you know, I had no idea really what I was doing, but um, I've been used to live audiences since I was a kid. So stand-up, I'm surprised that it took me so long kind of to find stand-up because it actually is like a perfect fit for me. So, um, but it it was a long journey to find it. (laughs) Well, I mean, the variety show was really cool. I mean, I was was kind of hooked for a while. I couldn't, I couldn't stop watching it for a little (laughs) bit. And it's like, you know, what a, what a cool thing to grow up being a part of. Um, you know, I mean, I know you have a little bit of an interesting story um, on how you got discovered with that, and you kind of, you kind of went on there really quickly. Can you kind of tell the audience how that happened? Yeah, um, I my mom is from the same hometown as Garrison Keeler, which is in Noka, Minnesota, and uh, she, my mom, my mom's a go getter, and she's a violinist. She she founded her own orchestra in Boston called the Pro Art Day Chamber Orchestra of Boston. Oh wow! And yeah, and she so she was doing a fundraiser, and she thought it would be a good idea uh, to ask Garrison Keeler to help with the fundraiser to you know do something for the fundraiser. And she wrote him a really nice you know handwritten letter. This was way back in the day when people still did that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and yeah, so he and he responded really well to it, and uh, he ended up going out there and doing um, the fundraiser and you know, got along really well with my mom, and then they went, they came and saw me in the Nutcracker. I was like a ballerina at the time, which was my main passion as a kid. I, I You know, I, I had no desire really to be an actress until a little later. I wanted to be a professional dancer. So um, you were already, you know, doing dancing and performing on stage with, with, with dancing men, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, my, see, my mom is a violinist, so I was raised, and my dad used to be a clarinetist, he changed professions, but um, my mom, you know, was always kind of like, find what you love to do, and so my whole, kind of, my whole childhood was sort of like doing arts, you know, things involved in performance art, like I did, uh, I also play cello, so I, you know, I was a cello major in college, and I did ballet until I was 16, and I realized I wasn't going to be the best ballerina in the world, <laughs> and then I quit cold turkey, which was, I think it was kind of oh, wow. stupid. Oh, After all those years, wow, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was really good, it's too. Just, it, but it just seems drastic, you know, after taking it so long. But if that's Yeah, it was a little talking. dramatic. I was a little dramatic, and I, I love, I mean, I, it was my passion. I just, um, I just was confused at that age as, you know, that you could do something just because you like doing it. It was like, oh, yeah, trust me, I know. We all go through that stage at that age. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if everyone does, but a certain personality definitely goes through that stage. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially if, that, if, you know, you're drawn to that type of life to want to be some form of entertainer. It doesn't matter whether it's dancing, singing, you know, comics or, you know, acting, whatever. If you have that type of passion to want to entertain people or to want to make other people laugh, I mean, that that's a hard kind of career to go after. But if you really mm-hmm. have that passion for it, then, yeah, it's something you could easily succeed at. And the fact that you've been on that show for such a long time, I mean, you've pretty much grown up in front of an audience and, and performing live on stage with all these people. And um, aren't you now also uh, one of the writers for these shows, as, for the show as well? You're one of the comedic writers? Um, currently, uh, no, no, I have written for it, but I'm not currently writing for it. But I have oh, in the past. I have in the well, past. 
Okay, well, see, I mean, that's wonderful. And, like, so when you started to get into stand-up, because now your stand-up is more of a recent thing for you, and that's something you're venturing out and doing solo that you're not um, doing it with a bunch of people, is that, like, a huge difference for you performing with, um, you know, a whole crew of, of talented, you know, artists and stuff with you to post just you by yourself? Well, the thing the thing that inspired me in a lot of ways, I think, is the fact that, you know, Garrison, you know, he's been doing Prairie Oak Companion for 41 years, and he created it all on his own, and he didn't know what it was going to be, you know, and basically it's his show, and he has guests, and he has actors and musicians and everything, but oh, yeah, like it's I was his, watching it. it's amazing, it's really amazing. Yeah. And it's his world, though, you know, so it's sort of like, I think the fact that he created his own world sort of inspired me to want to create my own world and, and think, oh, like, you know, he, you know, he's saying everything he wants to say, he, you know, he has a monologue every week and he does all this stuff on his own, you know, and I think it kind of inspired me to say, like, oh, I've learned as much as I can from that and now I want to go off and kind of make my own world and make, you know, say what I want to say. So I think it's sort of a natural like sort of a natural progression in a certain way, you know? Well, yeah, and and that would make sense, especially working with somebody so talented and and who was so successful at his passion, you know? Yeah. That's very inspiring, and, you know, how can you not want to go out and and try to do that, you know? And I I can see that. I can totally understand that, you know? So um, do you have, like, um, do you have, like, certain rituals or anything like that, like, to prepare yourself when you go on stage? Do you you get nervous at this point? I mean, having – grown up in front of the audience? Is it just like no big deal to you or? Oh, I still get, I still get nervous. The only time I think I didn't get nervous at doing Prairie Home was when I was like a kid because I had no idea what was going on. Didn't get nervous oh, okay. at all. Yeah, I did. But, um, I didn't realize it, the magnitude of how many people were staring at it, you at that moment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just kind of got up and did my job and didn't understand. Um, yeah, you're done. <laughs> but now, um, yeah, now I definitely get nervous um, before I go on stage. And usually, like, the second I get on stage, I, like, completely, like, relax. But before I get on, I'm like, you know, I'll go, I'll freak out. Like, I'll I'll tell uh, my manager, like, I'll text my manager, like, I'm freaking out. I'm really nervous. And then he'll text me, like, big surprise. Like, oh, <laughs> he's just used to it. He's like, like oh, no. Yeah, what what else is new? You know? <laughs> and I'm like, and I'll always be like, no, this time's different. Like, I'm really freaking out. No, this time I'm thrilled, right? Yes. Or I'll be like, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I suddenly have no idea how to do this. <laughs> yeah, or you feel like you might forget something that was important that you wanted to say or, or something yeah. like that. And, and I, I get that way, too, when I'm just talking to people and, and interviewing because I want to make sure I, I have all the right information and stuff. And so I make sure I have everything down so that I, I can, you know, re, you know, go back and to refer to it. But you, you yeah. can't refer to things once you're on stage. You have to already kind of have it down in your head. Yeah, yeah, and, so I, and as far as like get nervous. <laughs> as far as rituals go, like stand up, other stand ups kind of make fun of me because I always have my notebook and I always like am writing my list of jokes like out like an o like total OCD like like I because I plan my or my I plan my set like almost like you know to to like the joke especially if I do it long if I do uh-huh. like. 30 minutes, I'm always paranoid I'm going to forget something, so I, like, write everything down, because I'm, like, really visual, and, um, and, like, that's not really normal for (laughs) students. I love it. You sound like me. I need to scribble. I, I yeah, 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 yeah. I, I scribble, scribble and I write down. I still need to scribble sometimes. It doesn't yeah. matter, you know. And exactly. It, it's, how, it's however you work best for yourself. Then you know what? Who cares if the other kids comedians make you know comics make laugh or fun of you? I mean, I'd be like, that'd be like one of my jokes. You know what? I love it. They make fun of me. That means they all know me. You know? Yeah, yeah exactly. They'll, they'll, they'll be like, what are you writing? And I'm like, you're writing my jokes. You know? And they're like, really? <laughs> Like, like that's a joke. Just, just that yeah. line alone, right? Yeah. Some of oh, them will write things on their hands, which I've never understood. Because if I write something on my hand and I look at my hand, I'm gonna like completely lose focus, and I'll probably not be able to read it. Like that, that's a tradition I've never understood. Oh, yeah. that happened a lot. Yeah. If I look, I would hit my forehead, and it would just be, you know, that word stuck on my forehead. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. Kidding, yeah. You know, <laughs> Well, I mean, the punchline would be right on your forehead. Exactly. I wouldn't be able to think of it. I'd have to go to the audience. Can you look at this and tell me what my line is, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I know you've been really busy and stuff, and I mean, I everything I've been watching you on, you're on like Comics and Leash, Now the Playhouse, Gotham Live, you know, Comedy Live, Kids, uh, Comedy Bang Bang. You're kind of everywhere. I know you mentioned um, on one of your interviews that you also did the Howard Stern wrap up show, and you opened for T, uh, Pete Townsend recently. I mean, is that all correct? Oh wait, Pete Townsend. I totally messed that up in that interview. It was it was Pete Davidson. I oh, said Townsend, like, and oh my no God, one corrected me. <laughs> Nobody corrected me. And then later, my manager was like, "Why what did you say Pete Townsend?" I was like, "Oh, I meant Pete Davidson." <laughs> you know what? You know, just in case Pete Townsend, you know, give a shout out to. Yeah, exactly. I want to uh, open for him anyway. So. <laughs> I'll open for <laughs> anyone named Pete. I'll open for anyone. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, I'm sorry I hate to say it, but it's kind of nice when you see a professional mess up just a little bit only because it, it makes you look human and the rest of us don't feel so imperfect, you know, it, uh, it's unperfect, you know what I mean? Just because it's like, okay, it, I'm not the only one that makes mistakes, no matter how hard you try, sometimes it's just... Oh, good. Deal, you know? <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, that makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, you know, as long as you can laugh about it, who cares at this point, you know? Um, yeah. I think that's absolutely wonderful. So you've been doing this for how long? Have you been doing the um, the stand-up? That's kind of still new, right? Yeah, like three years. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, that's not very long compared to growing up in front of everybody on stage. And yeah. I've also starred in um, several independent films, and you produced and starred in a short film with uh, Ray Wise and Oscar nominee Sally Kirkland, a short uh, yeah. film called Yeah. And I know that premiered back at, um, in 2013 at the Idlewild Film Fest. And it's been getting a lot of reviews and a lot of awards and stuff. So, I mean, how did, how did that feel? I mean, what was that like, you know, to, to, to get such a great feedback on something that you, you know, that you produced and that you starred in? Yeah, that was cool. That um, wow, you did you did uh, your research because <laughs> not everyone, yeah, not everyone asked me about that. Um, so I thought yeah, that was a so, very cool piece of information, you know. Yeah, my um, so so Sally Kirkland uh, was my coach for a little while. She, I, I was introduced to her by an actor named Dave Vassio, and uh, Dave Vassio uh, introduced me to Sally, and Sally and I got along really well. And, uh, and, and she was sort of my coach for a bit. And, um, then I came up with this story I told you. It was sort of inspired by my grandmother. Um, the, the, the film took a different turn than the story it was inspired by, but, um, my grandmother has bipolar actually. And she was being checked in the hospital. Um, she was having an episode and, they were like, do you have a nickname you want to be named, you know, you want us to call you something? And she was like, oh, yes, call me Posey. And it was so weird. Like, I wasn't there, but my aunt was telling me the story. Uh-huh. And like, it was so weird because I mean, no one's ever heard that nickname. Like, it was like, oh. came out of left field. Like, oh. call me oh, no Posey. Way. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who calls you Posey? Like, who has ever called you that? So um, I thought that was a in- really interesting idea. And also the, the concept of – um when people lose their mind in any capacity, whether it's like uh, mental illness or Alzheimer's or whatever, like like we assume it's a negative thing, like they're going to a negative place. And yeah. I want to play with the idea that, oh, what if they're going to like a good, a better place? Like what if like losing your mind is a good thing and like you're actually happier than the rest of us, you know? Oh, my God. Yeah, what a great concept because like yeah. sometimes ignorance is bliss, you know? Kind of right. Like that. Yeah, like almost <laughs> like maybe... Maybe you're, like, turning – you're going backwards into your, like, childhood brain or something, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, well, that's absolutely wonderful. I mean, what a, what a, what a great concept, but, but at the same time, what a, what a, a cool way to kind of memorialize, you know, your, your family members and always, you know, have that there for them. That's really cool. And, and that's a funny story, too, how you came up with that. That's actually pretty cool. Oh, I'm kind of glad I dug a little deeper and got some more information because that was absolutely wonderful. Oh, and, thanks. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was so cool that Sally agreed to do it. You know, I mean, it was great to work with her, and she's, like, just an amazing actress, you know. Oh, so. yeah, definitely, definitely. I thought that was just so wonderful, and you're really pretty much at this point really in the category with a lot of some really serious great actors and actresses. And, I mean, I saw, like, um, you performed with Meryl Streep on the, on the Prairie Home and, and all these other <laughs> Main names and it's like God, it just 
I would just be so nervous walking around there with all those people. Oh, yeah, back to the nervous that thing. Um, with Meryl Streep was so nervous. Like, it was so funny because we were performing at Tanglewood, which is, like, a huge venue. And she was freaking out because, you know, she's used to sort of a contained set. Like, she's a film actress. You know, she's, yeah, used, yeah. To, she's used to being completely off book completely prepared, knowing what's going to happen that day, what scenes are going to happen. Garrison works on the fly. Like, you, you, he's, like, editing the script up to, like, five minutes before the show starts. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she, so <laughs> Yeah, so she's like, what is happening? She's like, oh, my gosh. And she was so sweet. She's like, I'm really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's, like, crazy to even hear that she would be nervous. She's, like, one of the great. She's somebody who I idolize, too, and I just, oh, she's just wonderful, you know. And, yeah. Oh, my gosh. But it was so, really cute. It was really oh. cute because it was very genuine. Like, she was definitely, like, really nervous. Like, she yeah. wasn't making it up. You know? She wasn't playing about things. So, <laughs> no. She was, just, like, did that make nervous. you feel a little bit better, though, too? So, you know, if you're a little nervous, you understand it's okay, that it's still natural for even seasons best, they still get nervous. You know, yeah. you know, if they don't have something yeah. like completely written down, because I mean, I, I know this is a live variety show, and I thought that was really cool. I didn't know if you guys did improv on the fly on the show itself or not, because it seems like it could, but you know, you never know. And yeah, yeah. it's wonderful. And then from there, you also oh. have uh, several of your web series, and um, the web series you have uh, called Up First Girl, and then you have a spinoff called Sandy's Sandy's Channel, correct? Yeah, I don't do it anymore, but that was sort of, like, one of my first things I did when I moved to L.A. I, you know, it was kind of, like, before everything sort of got crazy online, and the YouTube thing was was just starting. Oh, okay, so that was early in the career, because I know you got nominated and you won up, or you got nominated for up. L.A. Film Awards for, like, a most hilarious actress in (laughs) web Yeah, like some comedy thing. I don't know. Words are always kind of like, what is this? I don't know what that means. <laughs> but, oh, I just thought, oh, my God. Well, congratulations, you know, because, I mean, how many people are, 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 you know, nominated as the most hilarious actress in a web series? I mean, that's not an everyday nomination. I, I thought that was really cool, though, you know, to, to be able to do that. Yeah, the, the web series got, like, a quarter billion hits, which was insane. It got, like, so many uh, views, and yet... Um, I was known in the web series as Sandy. Like I didn't, I don't, I don't think I even got a credit with my own name for like a couple of years on it. Oh. And no one knew. Yeah, no one knew who I was. They all just assumed that I was Sandy. Sandy, so, yeah, because that's the character. Yeah. So it's automatically. Oh, this is Sandy. This is how she's it's, breaking out, and everybody knows Sandy. Exactly. Oh, that's, so that's yeah, that funny. was funny. Um, but but no, yeah, I think that was. That you've done so many different little projects. Yeah, I did a lot. Like, I did a, I did a bunch of horror films, and I did web stuff. Like, it's only recent that I've broken into television. It took me a while to get a good manager. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've really been busy, though. I mean, just all over the place. And you really are putting the name out there for yourself. And, and um, one of the skits I really bought, I thought it was so hilarious, I saw your little comedy skit with Khloe Kardashian. Oh, yeah. Sparkles, you know, that she needs to know. We were playing her assistant, and, oh, my God, I laughed so hard at that. I even, I even oh. ran, and I was showing my sister. I said, look, look, you know, you got to see this. you got to see this. I'm doing some research, but you got to see this. This is hilarious. Aww. Because so like, oh, like, I'm like, honestly, Chloe's my favorite. And I was like, oh, she got to work with her. And, oh, my God, this is so funny. And so I love it. Was that, was that something that you got to come up with? Did you get to make the, the character, her assistant character, or was that something that was um, already written kind of for you? It was written, um, and then the director reached out to me specifically and, and said that he really saw me playing uh, the part. I, I think it was written already, but I think he had me in mind, sort of. So I, I'm not sure if it was like – I don't know if he was writing it thinking of me or what. But um, but anyway, uh, they, they wanted to do this commercial, and they were like, yeah, we don't think that, like, she's – you know, I don't think we they didn't think comedy was like really her thing, so they wanted sort of a comedy relief person. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, yeah. Oh, the, I was that. <laughs> you guys blended so perfect, though. I thought it was so funny. It seemed like it was written for you. Just yeah. seeing the other, you know, stand up and, and and watching and listening to you it was like, oh, that was just so funny. And you know, I love it. I love it. I thought oh, thanks. Great. Yeah, that was really fun to do. That was a fun character to play. <laughs> it, yeah, it was great. I thought it was wonderful. And, 
Now, I mean, what do you have? Um, do you have anything coming up here soon, something that the fans are going to be able to go and see? Maybe, like, a, uh, you have a stand-up coming up soon or maybe a different show you're going to be doing? Um, well, let's see. I, um, I like, it's my, it's probably my favorite sitcom on right now. Yeah, we, we were definitely hooked. We, we watch it a lot. I love the fact that it is all just such a big variety and stuff because, like, um, we're a special needs family. My daughter is autistic and epileptic, and we know we're just, like, a mix of all kinds of craziness in our family as well. So uh-huh. We, like, you know, it's like we relate. We relate to the meltdowns and everything, just all the nuts yeah. and stuff. And I'm like, that's us. That's us. We're all crazy just like that. <laughs> yeah, there's like Perfect. there's a character for everyone in that. Like everyone can relate to somebody in the family, you know. Yes, so. exactly, exactly. And now, when are you going to come out? You said on um, the 24th. Is that of this month, February 24th? It's going to appear. Yes, yeah, I believe that's that's what it's supposed to appear. The, the episode is called like "How Does She Do It" or something like that. How, How does she, does she do, it? do it? Yeah. Okay, well, I am definitely going to watch that, and for all our Center Stage fans and, and readers out there, please make sure to tune in to Modern Family on February 24th and catch Erica Rose on there and, you know, give her a shout-out, give her some positive feedback, you know, when you where you can, you know, check it out and, and see how you thought, you know, what you thought about that. As long as I'm not cut out, you know, I'm always paranoid. I'm like, you never know. So <laughs> we'll, we'll wait. We're, we're definitely gonna wait for Erica. So they go check it out. You know, we're all waiting. Yeah. We have a we're all, lady. Don't and, cut her you know, out. Yeah, exactly. Give you a lot of hype. A lot of hype. Lot of hype. It's oh, not it's too late. Put her back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know. She's so funny. We gotta see what she does. <laughs> I know one of the producers on it, and I keep being like. Am I are, am I still in it? Like he's like, well, you're ridiculous. Like, <laughs> are you sure? You're like, yeah. I'm I'm always, always paranoid because <laughs> I know that can happen. Like I've known actors who've been like gone to movie premieres and like had a main part in a movie and then got cut out and didn't. The director didn't even tell them. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, and then you yeah. show up, and they're like, "Well, who are you, and and why are you standing yeah. next to them?" You know? Yeah, like you watch the whole movie, and you're like, "Where's my? Where are my scenes?" <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, no, I I would never want that to happen. I I totally get that. So again, make sure Erica Rose is on there. Modern Family, one of our favorite shows. We do watch that a lot. We love the way Aww. they sign us. And. <laughs> You know, I mean, this is wonderful. I think it's absolutely wonderful that you can be in this industry for so long because you really don't get a lot of childhood um, actors, you know, being able to make that whole transition from childhood actor to adult actor and still have that same vibe or even the same passion to do. Yeah. That. And, and you've been true. able to do it. It seems like you're doing it. You're, you're, you're making your mark, you're getting your name out there, and you seem to be all over the place, but I think that's fantastic. Um, is there, like, what sites can, can the fans, you know, reach you at? What, where our readers can find you and anybody that hasn't heard of you, where can they click on to go check everything out that you've done? What are your, your social sites? Um, okay, so, uh, well, I'm on Facebook and Twitter, so Twitter would be just at Erica Rhodes. And uh, Facebook, you can also find me um, at Erica Rhodes. But then, um, like, my site's sort of, like, in transition, sending people there right now. But you can go to my YouTube channel, and I have a, t- I have a bunch of um, my stand-up on my YouTube channel. So okay. if you just search for my YouTube channel, I think it's also just Erica Rhodes. Um, you'll, you can find the Chloe thing. You can find my acting reel. You can find... Um, uh, a bunch of stand-up sets on there. I, I did see your acting reel. I did, oh, I did, cool. I <laughs> and then I even saw, like, um, uh, your uh, ninja view. Was it like you were interviewing? Oh, my gosh. Ninja view. Wow. You, you looked, looked at good. everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, like, like you said, I, I was nervous of not... You know, making sure I, I, you know, I got everything out there. I just wanted to make sure I had, I was prepared. You know, I there are some, amazing. there are some videos that I wish I could take down from YouTube. Oh. Um, if I'm in a red top, don't watch those. <laughs> okay, don't watch the red ones. Don't uh, watch the, the red tank top, top ones. Then only, correct? Yeah, the red, the red tank top one. 
is like when I just started out and like unfortunately I don't have the rights to those videos and I wish I could take them down because oh. like I'm a beginner I don't you know and it's and I the comments are so mean under it they're like this she's horrible <laughs> like oh my gosh really yeah I was like I, I I barely even looked at it but then like recently I went and looked at it and like I saw all these comments that were so mean and so I wrote a comment at the top and I'm like hey guys like this is what I just started out like and I can't take these down <laughs> like oh my god like, check out my other stuff and I put a link to like the you know a set I actually like oh you know what that's a good positive way to do with that then, you know, and to, yeah. and to like, you know what, I'll take it as perfect criticism, you know what, that's fine, I just started out, everybody needs to know when they first start out, you know, where they're lacking or, you know, or where their audience feels they need to be stronger, and then that kind of helps you, and the fact that you got on and put on, look, here's a show that I did a better job. Yeah. And you put that in a positive way. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's annoying because it's like you have stuff online. I'm sure everybody does, though. Like, everyone has stuff online that they can't get rid of, and it's, like, probably the most frustrating thing. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. You know, like, it's kind of just like comes with your the friends character. Will post and you're like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. And it's too late. And Yeah. yeah no, I get it. I get it. I totally understand. <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm directing people. I'm like, yeah, if, if I'm – Top. If I'm in a black top, you can watch it. Those are yeah. black <laughs> top, love- yellow top, not the red top. Yeah, yeah. Not the red. No, look, red top part. means stop. <laughs> red means stop. <laughs> yellow <laughs> means go <laughs> slowly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, and on the next one, you have to show up in a green shirt. So just go and just go with it and don't stop, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That'll be my best at ever if I show up in a green top. <laughs> oh, my God. You show up in a green top, let me know ahead of time. I will get tickets, and I will be there. I'll pack the audience with all my friends and all my family. I'll go to support you. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I do love comedians. It's one of the um, one of my favorite entertainments because I like being able to go out and, and hear funny people and people who want to make the world laugh because it helps us reset when we have to deal with stress and anxiety. It's nice yeah. to be able to have that, that momentary break from real life. And mm-hmm. laughter is the best medicine. It really is. It does lo- lower your stress levels, and it does make you feel better, and it gives you that break. And I appreciate anybody who is willing to get up there and take criticism to try to just bring us some laughter and entertainment. I appreciate that, and Aww. I appreciate everything you do, and, you know, I, I think it's wonderful. And I really enjoy talking to you, and like I said, I was a little nervous. Um, oh, watching everything with you because you just seem like you're. I mean, you're a lifelong entertainer. You're not somebody who just dropped out of the sky. This is something you've been doing a long time. Yeah, so, but I'm still. You know, I'm not like you're at like comic. Uh, what was it last comic standing? Those yeah, last her. comic standing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember seeing her perform on those before she did become a big name. So. Give yourself credit. She, you know, a lot of these people do go behind the scenes and are in there a lot longer, and it just seems like all of a sudden they're there. Oh, yeah. Like, no. Oh, know. gosh. You're so right. right. I mean, people people always think it's like, oh, where did she come from? And it's like, no, she's been around forever. <laughs> like, you're like, you just noticed. You just <laughs> Look noticed. Look at all the pictures. Look in the background. She's there. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, yeah, I think that's absolutely wonderful. So, um, so yeah, so just, like, in, like next time you have something coming up, you have a show or a Oh, yeah, by up. the way, I just started producing my own uh, stand-up show, which I did last night. That's probably why I don't have a voice today. Um, oh, awesome. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah, I um, it, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, Like, I never thought I would do it, um, but my friend Josh Fadum, who's, like, one of my favorite comics in town, he sort of suggested I do it because I was like, I want to be, like, more involved in the community, you know, and it's like the community is pretty tight-knit, but it's also kind of, like, in some ways, like, you know, hard to break into certain circles and everything. And, and he's like, why don't you just do your own show? And I was like, I was hesitant at first because it is a big, you know, it's a big undertaking to do that. You produce your own show, like, find the venue, do all that. But he knew a friend who knew someone who um, owns – Circus of Books, which is a gay porn store <laughs> in Silver Lake. It's like you before. <laughs> yeah, it's like a we gay porn bookstore. <laughs> is that allowed to say? Am I allowed to say that? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> it's a bookstore and happens to yeah. Um, 
but yeah, the the comedy is. But anyway, so I um, so I got hooked up with them, and then uh, it ended up being like a perfect venue. Actually, like we like you know took out some of the bookshelves, and we put seats in, and we got like we got a live cellist randomly enough. Oh and, wow! Yeah, and we, we got really good comedy. Were you a cellist as well? So was that live cellist yourself, or was that somebody else? Oh no, no, it was someone else, and it was the uh, the guy that told me his name's Jesse Angle. He he found her, and I was like, and I told him after he found her that I was a cellist. He was like, Oh, I know you play cello, and I was like, Yeah. So um, so we had like your scene with you one day, you know? <laughs> yeah, we had this live cellist like as people came in, and then we had like free wine and cookies, which was, everybody loved that, and um, and then I had great comics on, and I hosted, and we had, like, a huge turnout last night. It was so good. It was so oh, much fun. Awesome. So, now, or is this something that you're going to be doing ongoing, a regular thing, or is this... Yeah, like- I'm going to do it every other week. Like, I was like, oh, I, huh? I think every week is going to be too insane for me, so I'm going to do every other week. And, well, even uh, every other week seems kind of crazy with with the, all the stuff that you do, but I mean, yeah. you, have, you have the passion for it. So obviously, when they came to you to do it, they they knew you have determination as well. So I mean, that's yeah. Cool. So I was kind of like surprised it all came together so well, and now and everyone was like, "Are you still? Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna keep doing it?" So now I'm like, "Yeah, I guess so." <laughs> <laughs> Doing good so far. Let's, let's yeah. Let's, why let's not? <laughs> yeah. So every other Monday, I'm going to do it every other Monday. Okay. Now, where can we go and see this, or any readers, you know, that are, are you know listening to this um, when this comes out? Where can they go to see you for this? So I have a Facebook page for this. It's called the um, Nightlight Comedy Show. And Nightlight you can Comedy. Find the Nightlight Comedy Show. Comedy Show. Okay. Um, and and yeah, just, like the page, and I'll put up, you know, when I'll, I'll let you know when the next show is, which is probably the 22nd, I think. Okay. So that's going to be coming up here pretty soon then. Yeah, yeah, I've got to book it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be good, especially since we just told, you know, everybody to. Yeah, we told everyone it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I have to put on a show. Be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Modern oh, Family, yeah. my show. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, um, you know, make sure everybody check her out on Modern Family. Check out her Night Light Comedy Show. She'll be doing it every other Monday, um, you know. And, yeah, so anytime you have anything like that, make sure to let us know, and we'll definitely, like, you know, give a little quick, um, you know, insert on the magazine just to kind of, hey, don't forget, you know, when we talk to Erica Rhodes, she's going to be producing the show or she's going to be starring here. Don't forget to go catch her again and, you know, maybe help just kind of keep putting your name out there and, you know, and oh, that thanks. Cool. you get to yeah. the point where you have your own show going 100% and, you know, everything you want to do and, you know, just just say hi to center stage and we'll come out again and, and do what we can to help promote you and, you know, just help you out, help each other out. And I think this is wonderful and great and I was happy to talk to you. And Oh, you, um, t- you live local here? Well, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in Orange County. So you're oh, in Orange, okay. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're we're actually close enough, you know. So if it's something that you're doing out there, it's something that we as long as we have noticed, then it's something close. You know, we can get out there and you know maybe check it out for you and you know again you know do some reporting on it for you and just kind of give you more exposure on that. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you know, and just anybody checking you out, you know, just again make sure to check out Erica Rose at um you know all her social sites are EricaRose.com or Erica Rose on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, you said the Twitter is not working right now, so you just find every bit just, but they can just go to oh, Erica no, Rose, they'll find you. No, Twitter is working. My oh, site Twitter. is, yeah, my site isn't EricaRose.com. It's EricaRose.net, but it's like, I'm changing my website, so don't really okay. go there. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you go there, you know, check it out. And, um, yeah, this was great. I mean, is there anything else you would like to add or let the readers out there know? Um, hmm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing something on NPR like a stand up show, but I'm blanking on the name, so I have to um I have to look up what what it's called. But that's at the end of the month, so I'll, I'll post something about it. But that should be fun. Okay. Um, yeah, so then, you know, people on the will have more of a chance to come out and see you more than you know once or you know or twice because you know just the oh, yeah. schedule. You know. Yeah, so. I'm doing shows like all the time, but I I usually like. I'm kind of bad about, I put it up at the last minute, like I'll put it like a couple days before, so like you kind of have to keep checking, 
but um, I think once people realize that, they check more, like, my page. You know, they're like, oh, okay, let's see if she put it. Tonight, I've got a show tonight. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> You're like, okay, um, let's just keep your schedule clear until 6 o'clock, check the site, and go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I only I only had two weeks to, to prep this show that I was producing, and I didn't expect anyone to come, and it was, like, packed. So, oh, wow. I guess that's sometimes a long time to, to, to do that. Yeah, so. I know. It was kind of amazing. I was, I, you know, I hope that the next one, knock on wood, will also be good. But, you know, it was it, yep. it was up to a great start. So that's cool. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, just it's something else that just you're bringing in audiences. And that's awesome. You know, that's really Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, that's kind of cool when people show, show up. You're like, oh, wow, you're here. You're here. <laughs> Yeah, that would be nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, you you came. Thanks. I, I said it was kind of like throwing my, like a birthday party. You know, you're like, oh, hey, it's my birthday. Are you going to come? And then when people do, you're like, oh, you came. Wow. You're like, but you said it was your birthday. I bought a present. I bought a little cupcake. <laughs> yeah, I should start saying it's my birthday. Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> every, like every month it's your birthday, you know, so. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. We have to start celebrating your unbirthday now. <laughs> yeah, when I actually say it's my birthday, they're like, yeah, sure it is. <laughs> Nobody believes you, right? <laughs> <laughs> the girl well, who cried birthday. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> well, again, we'll definitely, you know, check in with you and, um, so at the end of the month, also, we'll check back with you to see, you know, when your new shows are coming up. And we'll just, like I said, get a little teaser on the magazine and let people know that you're performing so they can come out and see you. And, again, you know, we're kind of close enough. So on your next big thing, maybe we can, you know, try to get something scheduled to come out. And maybe next time do, like, an actual on-camera um, interview instead of just oh, audio. Yeah. You know, That'd be which cool. Is great. Missy does a lot of the on-camera ones, so it might be her. I'm not sure. But um, either way, I mean, I, I love talking to you. And yeah, I me think- too. Yeah, I think the readers are going to, you know, find you fascinating, and anybody that can make, you know, make someone laugh is worth checking out. So, Aw, well, thank you. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. That's definitely my recommendation, and this is Dilly Briggs with Center Stage Magazine. Once again, thank you with a very funny, very entertaining comedic actress and stand-up comic Erica Rose, and we will be checking you out soon, and we hope all our readers will check her, you know, check you out as well, and bring you more of a fan base. And, again, don't forget to see her on Modern Family. You know, make sure she gets on there and... (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, get back you up. (laughs) Thank you so much, Erica, for taking your time out to speak with me. You seem like you're very busy, so I really appreciate it that you did this. And I know we kind of walked through a little bit before we started recording of what we were going to go over and everything, and um, I appreciate that. You made it less nervous for me, and, you know, we're able to oh. laugh a little bit, so <laughs> kind of broke the ice and made, it, made me feel better that, you know, I wasn't so nervous anymore speaking to you once we started. <laughs> oh, good. Well, you should know, I, I should never, I wouldn't make anyone nervous, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but again, thank you so much for taking the time, and, um, yeah, everybody check her out, and we will talk to you um, another copy. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, thank you, and we'll, we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye.